everyone, I'm JD from Willow Band Journals. Welcome back to my channel. Here is part two of making a junk journal from start to finish. It is a vintage French journal. In the first video, we made the cover. Ta-da! <laughs> I love this collage. This is one of my favorite collages from each of the collage packs that I have made. And I have a mixture of papers for my feature pages. This is the cover and paper pack vintage French mix packed in my Etsy. Um, I'm just going to move all the rest of the materials out of the way and let's work with these. So if you already have other pages that you want to use, go ahead and use those, but I'll just show you how I use these ones. So the first thing I do is open up my cover and what I'm going to do is fold these so that they are fitting within the height and the width of the journal. So you can see that. This one I don't really need to cut down. So we'll leave that one. And the only thing that you have to decide is which one you want to be the first page you see. We'll work that out later when we go to the order of pages. So we've got one of my linen and ledger papers from the linen and ledger kit. We have a vintage ledger, two papers from the ledger kit. I think I want this side actually. This is my favorite ledger in the kit. I just love how neutral it looks, the, that color there. And this one here is a vintage French receipt. This one comes from the vintage French kit. So what I've done, that's what I mean by is a mixed, mixed paper pack. So that I've taken papers from each of the various vintage French papers, paper kits in my Etsy, merged them all together into one kit. So you don't need to purchase 10 different paper kits. You can just get the one and have a variety. But some of you might have already purchased the other kits, so you are most welcome to use any of those kits as well. Now, I'm going to just trim that one down a little bit so it fits in there. And when the journal bulks up in the signature, the inner pages, I will probably have to cut those down. Now, this one... Oh, we have an upside down page. <laughs> Now, that is a totally okay too. The amount of times that I see in the Facebook group page, um, there's one in Australia, one for Australia, one worldwide, and the amount of times that I see people saying, oh, I sewed in a whole signature upside down, or placed a pocket upside down, or something upside down, we all just have a little giggle and say, been there, done that, leave it just keep it as is because anything goes in a junk journal oh this is one of my favorite uh, vintage papers as well i love the writing and the color oh my cat wants to come back in let me go get him hi honey good boy <laughs> all right so that one I might have to trim down later on too. And then we have this one. That's another thing. As I do this series, let me just share some rambling thoughts and tips and advice and things I've picked up and learned throughout this journey that hopefully may help you. Hi, Keanu. <laughs> um, embrace mistakes. I know where a lot of us crafters are perfectionists. I put my hand up for that. But the thing with junk journals especially is that it's so forgiving that really anything goes that's like the saying for junk journals anything goes <laughs> um, mistakes are sort of great in junk journals that's sort of part of the charm even of a handmade junk journal so don't beat yourself up about mistakes and honestly I see a lot as well in those Facebook groups about people saying they compare their junk journals to other people's junk journals and they say things like, oh, my journals aren't as good as other people's and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, no, <laughs> that's not what this is about. This craft, this craft is all about 
pure enjoyment and you having fun creating and putting together a journal and everyone's going to create different journals like everyone will have different styles that they like and you know just oh it breaks my heart when I see people comparing their work to other people's or when they yeah when I say oh my work's not as good as theirs um because that kind of isn't the point of making a journal that's not the point of creating the point of creating is well for me anyway <laughs> it's to literally just enjoy it I enjoy the process, I enjoy the end result because I'm listening as I'm creating, I'm listening to whatever my heart is leading me to do and I put things together the way I want them together. So actually I'm going to have to put this over here. So um, I'm just going to cut that one down there. So... I know that's not everyone's experience and this is something I've had to learn as well about how <laughs> sorry I just had to um, stop the video uh, life interruptions uh, where was I so I was talking about creativity and people's different experiences yeah for me creative creativity has always been an enjoyable activity it's never been stressful for me to create um, and so I didn't understand until later on uh, actually until probably this year, that for some people creating is a stressful activity, like they enjoy it, but it's stressful. Um, and I used to always just dismiss that and be like, oh no, it's just not stressful, like don't be stressed when you do it. And telling someone when they're stressed not to be stressed, totally unhelpful, it doesn't work like that. So I have to eat my words and apologise if I've ever been insensitive or rude uh, to those who have been stressed and especially by creativity. So um, now I can, I know what it feels like to be stressed. I don't get that feeling from creating, but I know what it's like to be stressed from other activities. And so I can use that and be empathetic to those of you who do feel stressed when you create. And now I understand, I understand, wow, okay, I get what that's like for you to be stressed out by that. And and again, it's not helpful for me to say something like, oh, well, just don't be stressed about it. Um, in fact, I don't actually quite know what the most helpful thing to say is, but just to share my experience that it doesn't have to be a stressful thing, that it isn't stressful for everyone and that we can take pressure of ourselves to have things perfect. We can take pressure of ourselves to have things look like someone else's work. Um, and that creativity can just be something that we do for pure enjoyment for our own selves, our own souls, for eye, for our eyes only. And that's why I guess for me, I always enjoy the creative process and I tend to always enjoy the finished result because I've just created what I like to create. Um, and I know not everyone knows what they like to create. They're not in touch with um, that creative side of themselves or even know what they like and what they don't like. And all I say to that one is just keep going. Just do it over and over and over again. And eventually you do find that you creativity is a way of finding connection with yourself and finding what you do like and what you don't like. But it comes by repetition. It comes by practice. It comes by doing it over and over and over again. So yeah, um, some little tips there as I folded these uh, feature pages. So a tip, if you don't want them upside down like I did, just print them double-sided on short edge. I, I printed these with the long edge setting. So print them on short edge and they'll be the right way up. But I, again, I'm not too fast. I'm not gonna let that ruin my day or my journal. Um, and I hope that can be an example uh, to you out there as well, that mistakes are okay. Handwriting with mistakes in your handwriting, totally okay. Just cross it out and write the word again. It's, it's all good. You just press on, keep going. Because in a junk journal, this is why mistakes are forgiving in a junk journal. Because once you have the journal, you just cover that up. You just cover up that mistake with a photo, with ephemera, with journaling space. 
love it. Love how forgiving junk journals are. If there's anything that you don't like on the page, once you've put it together, you just cover that thing up when you come to do your journaling. <laughs> All right, so if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, so that is my uh, feature pages, really simple. Uh, just folding those in half. I thought I might have to do more trimming down of these. Um, and depending on what feature pages you use, what size cover you use, you might have to trim them down at the top and bottom as well. Um, but yeah, these ones worked pretty well. And two, four, six, eight, ten. I like having ten feature pages so that then I can have ten blank pages to balance it out. And then I usually have five or so novelty type pages, interactive pages. So we'll get to that in the next video and I will see you then. <laughs> Bye guys. Thank you to my beautiful patrons who supported me in September. I could not do this without you. So thank you so much for allowing me to create and share videos for yet another month. If you'd like to become a patron in October, uh, the link will be below in the description box. That's where you get access to behind the scenes looks, sneak peeks, first access to my journals. Uh, at the Ruby level, you get all printables from my Etsy shop. Emerald level, you get extra printables. And then there are some mail tiers as well. I'm also running my courses, my journaling courses again in October, so feel free to sign up for any of those. Just send me an email and check the, all the links in the description box below for ways to contact me and be part of the world of Willowbound Journals.